Hello and welcome. You're watching Midday News on Rajya Sabha TV. I'm Rajat Kain. Let's have a look at the top headlines so far. Aim to link Varanasi to world-class infrastructure while conserving its heritage, says Prime Minister Modi. Says the city has seen tangible changes in last four years. Inaugurates and lays foundation for projects worth over 500 crores. Transformation every sense is the motto of the present government. Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu asks business community at Indo-Malta Business Forum to invest in India. To leave for the last leg of his three-nation European tour to Romania today. Lowest infant mortality rate in India in last five years, says United Nations in its report for the year 2017. Improvement in institutional delivery and strengthening of routine immunization main reasons, say Centre's portion campaign and commitment to make India open defecation free by 2019 to accelerate progress. Myanmar's powerful army should be removed from politics, says UN investigators. In its final report, retrades call for top generals to be prosecuted for genocide against Rohingyas. And India to play Hong Kong in the opening match of the Asia Cup cricket tournament in the UAE today evening. Five-time champions Sri Lanka knocked out by Afghanistan. A top story. Prime Minister Modi today laid the foundation stone and inaugurated several projects worth more than 500 crore rupees in Varanasi. The Prime Minister in his address at the Banaras Hindu University counted the work that has been done by the government in the last four years for the betterment of Varanasi. He said the changes are tangible. Ajaa, sade 500 crore rupees se jada rakam ke pradesh ka ya to lokarpan hua hai ya phir silanyas hua hai. Vikas ke ekarya. बनारस शहर ही नहीं बल्कि आसपास के गांवों से भी जुड़े हैं इनमें बिजली पानी जैसी मूलभूत आवश्यकताओं से जुड़ी परियोजनाएं तो है ही साथ में किसानों बुनकरों और शिल्पकारों को नए अवसरों से जोड़ने वाले प्रोजेक्ट भी शामिल है इतना ही नहीं बनारस हिंदू विश्वविद्यालय को 21वीं सदी का महत्वपूर्ण नॉलेज सेंटर बनाने के लिए भी कई प्रोजेक्ट्स की शुरुआत की गई है the Prime Minister also said that massive work is being done in connection with electrification of Varanasi with special focus on underground cabling. शहर के एक बड़े हिस्से से लटकते हुए तार गायब हो गए हैं। बाकी जगहों पर भी इन तारों को जमीन के भीतर बिछाने का काम तेजी से जारी है। आज बिजली करण से जुड़े जिन पांच बड़े प्रोजेक्ट का लोकार्पण किया गया है उनमें पुरानी काशी को बिजली के लटकते तारों से मुक्ति का भी काम उसमें शामिल है इन सभी प्रोजेक्ट से वाराणसी शहर के अलावा आस पास के अनेक गांवों को पर्याप्त बिजली देने का लक्ष्य को और बल मिलने वाला है इसके अलावा आज एक और विद्युत उपकेंद्र का शिलान्यास भी किया गया है जब ये तैयार हो जाएगा तो आस पास के बहुत बड़े क्षेत्र को कम वोल्टेज की समस्या से छुटकारा मिलेगा 
साथियों वाराणसी को पूर्वी भारत के गेटवे के तौर पर विकसित करने का बरसक प्रयास हो रहा है The Prime Minister also said that the thrust and cleanliness has offered a facelift to the city. Paryatan se parivartan ka ye abhiyan nirantar jari hai. Bhaiji aur behno, bite char varso se kasi ki virasat hamari drohoro ko sanjone ka unhe sabarne ka kaam kiya ja raha hai. स्वच्छता के मामले में भी काशी ने परिवर्तन देखा है आज यहां के घाटों सड़कों और गलियों में स्वच्छता स्थायी बनती जा रही है ना सिर्फ साफ सफाई बल्कि कूड़े के निस्तारण के भी ठोस उपाय किए गए हैं In another development, Prime Minister Modi and his Bangladeshi counterpart Sheikh Hasina to jointly flag off the construction of Indo-Bangla pipeline project through video conferencing later in the day today. Both countries had entered into an agreement for the pipeline construction April this year during Foreign Secretary Vijay Gokhale's visit to Dhaka. The 130 kilometers long pipeline will connect Siliguri in West Bengal uh, and Parbatipur in Dinajpur district of Bangladesh. The estimated project cost will be 346 crore rupees, and it will be completed in 30 months. The capacity of the pipeline will be 1 million metric tons per annum. The project will replace the existing practice of sending diesel by rail, covering a distance of 510 kilometers. Now, India and Malta have signed three agreements during the ongoing visit of Vice President M. Venkaiah Naidu. Vice President Naidu, who is the first. Senior Indian leader to visit the Mediterranean nation in last 28 years also held comprehensive discussion with the president of Malta. The vice president also addressed the Indo-Malta Business Forum and said the present government is working with the motto of transformation in every sense. India and Malta signed three agreements on Monday in the areas of maritime cooperation, tourism, and diplomatic studies. The agreements were signed in the presence of visiting Vice President M Venkaiah Naidu and President of Malta Mari Louis Colero Preka. Both leaders also held talks on ways to enhance bilateral relations in tourism, manufacturing, education and shipping. India and Malta are growing at a steady pace. If we can work together, we can certainly grow faster. Both our countries are complementary and technically based. We need to bolster our relationship with far more substantial cooperation on the economic scientific technological human resource development fronts calling malta one of india's most trusted partners in the european union the vice president called for substantive cooperation on the economic scientific technological and human resource development fronts he also said the recent reopening of the resident mission in malta is testimony of long standing excellent relations between india and malta you can take the advantage of india's highly skilled professionals in the field of it financial services health pharmaceutical transport and also freight and uh, tourism muta looks forward to the conclusion of an effective eu india free trade agreement on the other hand Br britain's exit from the european union should provide an opportunity to further the trade and business links between our countries India and Malta have agreed to extend cooperation in the field of tourism health and especially generic medicines during the high level delegation talks held between the vice president of India and the president of Malta both the leaders have agreed to extend cooperation at the UN level and also try to explore opportunities of business for both the chambers in Malta The two leaders also attended the India Malta Business Forum. Vice President Naidu said transformation in every sense is the motto of the present government. Over the last half a decade India has witnessed a positive swing in stock market indices, foreign exchange reserves and public investment in infrastructure. Indian economy is growing at a rate of around 8% plus. Currently is one of the fastest growing major economy in the world. transforming in every sense is the motto of the present government he also counted the various economic reforms undertaken in india in recent years 
A number of economic reforms have been carried in the recent days. The most important is digitization of the economy, financial inclusion, tax reforms like good service tax. It is a major revolutionary transformation taxation proposal that has happened in India. And that has widened the tax net. The revenues of the government are increasing and people are all coming to the tax net. The interest rates are coming down. The tax rates are coming down. And with the tax base being widened and the tax compliance automatically has increased. Speaking at the event, the President of Malta said that the Vice President's visit will have a powerful impact on bilateral relations and will help build a strong trade and business network between the two countries. Vice President of India and the President of Malta addressed the India Malta Business Forum and assured the businessmen of all the support when they come to invest in both the countries. They have also encouraged businessmen to take part in the development process of both the countries that are taking a progressive and growth path by reforms such as GST, Make in India and Digital India. With camera person Raj Thakur from Malta, Raj Kamal Rao, Rajya Sabha TV. Today, the Vice President will visit the St. Jones Cathedral in Malta capital, Valletta. He will also visit the Upper Baraka Gardens and the Cathedral of Imrina before emplaining for Romanian capital, Bucharest. Back to domestic news, the Rashtriya Swayam Sevak Sangh, the found, ideological fountainhead of the ruling BJP, started a three-day lecture series in the national capital on Monday to engage with a cross-section of people and present its perspective on the future of the country. On the first day of the event, the future of Bharat, an RSS perspective, RSS chief Mohan Bhagwat addressed the occasion. Several eminent personalities from various walks of life were present. Bhagwat said the event aimed at helping people to understand the organization. Bhagwat spoke on a variety of issues, including the freedom movement. He said the Congress played a big role in freedom movement and gave India many great personalities. He also underlined that the work RSS does is incomparable, while underscoring that India had a tradition to work with different ideologies. <laughs> किसी को भेदभाव से शत्रुता भाव से नहीं देखता और इसके कारण जिसने समाज का स्नेह और विश्वास अर्जित किया है ऐसा आचरण करने वाले लोगों की टोली प्रत्येक गांव में प्रत्येक मोहल्ले में खड़ी हो यह योजना 1925 में संघ के रूप में प्रारंभ हुई संघ बस इतना ही है इससे ज्यादा नहीं now, as part of government's effort to revive credit and economic growth, state-owned Bank of Baroda, Vijaya Bank and Dana Bank will be merged to create country's third largest vendor. The proposal will be sent to the boards of three banks that need to approve it before any further process. The government will continue to provide capital support to the merged identity. Three banks will continue to work independently post the merger. The move comes after top lender State Bank of India last year merged with itself five of its subsidiary banks and took over Bharatiya Mahila Bank. Announcing the plan, Finance Minister Arun Jaitley said merger will make banks stronger and sustainable and increase their lending ability. And therefore this major decision was taken by the alternate mechanism today <coughs> to amalgamate the Bank of Baroda, Dina Bank and Vijaya Bank. Nobody should have a worry because uh, this amalgamated entity will increase the banking operations. Its ability to increase and expand will be inevitable. Speaking about the health of the banking sector, the finance minister said the indiscriminate lending during the period 2008 to 14 was the reason for weak health of the sector. He added that lending period increased from 18 lakh crore before the 2008 to 55 lakh crore rupees during that period. Jaitley further said that various steps taken by the government to address NPAs have started to show results. Time for a very short break. More news on the other side. On this edition of India's World, we will analyze the bilateral relationship between Russia and India. I think India has, a, uh, has this uh, 
uh, as a as a as a growing power which which wants to exercise strategic autonomy has to maintain relationship uh, with all countries including russia you look at all the multilateral forums where russia and india are together the russians want more of us the russians wants to be there in a big way because that's how they feel they can balance out the chinese hegemony militarily we cannot do without russia at this stage 67% of military hardware is of russian origin repairs and maintenance of that will require intervention of russia welcome back the united nation interagency group for child mortality estimation has said that india continues to show impressive decline in child deaths according to a new unigme report about 8.02 lakh infant deaths were reported in india in 2017 the lowest in 5 years the report added that about 6 lakh 5000 neonatal deaths were reported in india in 2017 while the number of deaths among children aged between 5 to 14 bracket was 1 lakh 52000 In 2016, India's infant mortality rate was 44 per 1,000 live births. UNICEF India's representative Yasmin Ali Haik said efforts for improving institutional delivery, along with countrywide scale of the special newborn care units and strengthening of routine immunisation, have been instrumental towards this. She added, central government's portion campaign and national commitment to making India open defecation free by 2019 are steps that will help in accelerating the progress further. The 73rd session of the United Nations General Assembly will open today in New York City with high-level dialogues scheduled for next week. The first day of high-level general debate will be held on 25th September 2018 and is scheduled to last for nine working days. On 26th September, the UNGA will hold high-level meeting on the fight against tuberculosis as agreed by member states in February 2018. External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj will address the annual high-level UN General Assembly session on September 29th. The theme of general debate will be making the United Nations relevant to all people, global leadership and shared responsibilities for peaceful, equitable and sustainable societies. Now in a real reference to Pakistan, India has said safe havens in Afghanistan's neighborhood have for years provided safety for dark agendas of various terror outfit like Taliban and Lashkar-e-Taiba. India also called for crippling the illicit drug trade which provides financial sustenance to these terror outfit. India's permanent representative to UN Ambassador Said Akbaruddin said at a Security Council debate in Af- Afghanistan in New York on Monday. He said the Taliban aided by their supporters continue to pursue military operations perpetrating violence and destruction over several parts of Afghanistan continuing the attack on Pakistan he further added that these sanctuaries have been aiding terror outfit for years now the Taliban aided by their supporters continue to pursue military operations perpetrating violence and destruction like the recent attack in Ghazni over several parts of Afghanistan these offensive are planned and launched by those who are harbored in safe havens in the neighborhood of Afghanistan these sanctuaries have for years provided safety for the dark agendas of ideologically and operationally fused terror networks like the Taliban the Haqqani network Daesh Al Qaeda and its proscribed affiliates such as the Lashkar-e-Toiba and the Jaish Mohammed The South Korean president Moon Jae-in arrived in Pyongyang today for a 3-day visit. North Korean leader Kim Jong Un greeted Moon Jae upon his arrival in Pyongyang for the third summit of this year. The two leaders will discuss a host of issues which include economic cooperation, North Korea's nuclear weapon program and formally ending the Korean War. Moon will also help resolve the nuclear standoff between the North Korea and the United States. Since the beginning of the year North Korea has embarked upon an unprecedented path of meeting with both South and the US. However the talks with Washington have reached a deadlock with both sides so far agreeing only for a very general goals. South Korea has taken on key mediating role. It will also be his third meeting with North Korea's Kim Jong Un since their historic summit at the border in April this year.
미국의 비핵화 조치 요구와 북측의 적대관계 청산과 안전보장을 위한 상응 조치 요구 사이에서 어떻게 접점을 찾을 수 있을 것인지 김정은 위원장과 허심탄회한 대화를 나누어 보고자 합니다. 저는 김정은 위원장과 트럼프 대통령의 진정한 의지를 여러 차례 확인했습니다. 대화의 물꼬가 트이고 두 정상이 다시 마주 앉는다면 The US has imposed fresh tariffs of on 200 billion dollars worth of Chinese goods as it escalates its trade war with Beijing. The taxes will reportedly take effect from 24th September starting at 10% and increasing to 25% from the start of next year. The higher import taxes will apply to almost 6000 items marking the biggest round of US tariffs so far. Handbags, rice and textiles will also be included, but some items expected to be targeted such as smart watches and high chairs have been excluded. China has previously vowed to retaliate against any further US tariffs. President Donald Trump said the latest round of tariff wars in response to China's unfair trade practices. UN investigators today said that Myanmar's powerful army should be removed from politics as they released a final report on reiterating calls for top generals to be prosecuted for genocide against the Rohingyas. The report said that a brutal military crackdown last year forced more than 7 lakh Rohingya to flee over the border to Bangladesh. The UN's 444-page probe called for military top leadership to be replaced and for the institution to have no further influence over country's governance. As flooding continues to inundate North Carolina, death toll from Hurricane Florence has risen to at least 31. The state's governor said on Monday that epic storm was still an immediate danger as rivers reach major flood levels. The coastal city of Wilmington became an island amid heavy floods following the storm. The U.S. National Weather Service has warned of at least two further days of possible flash flooding in the area. And the cleanup from Typhoon Mankhut began in Hong Kong and southern China on Monday after the storm left at least four dead in Gyeongdong province, damaged buildings and disrupted flights throughout the region. Meanwhile, emergency workers in Philippines recovered more than 40 bodies from muddied wreckage of gold miners after Typhoon Mankhut set off the landslide, burying the remote northern island, northern town Ingutong, in a river debris. In the Philippines, the police gave an unofficial death toll of 54 people. On to some sports news now. Names of Indian skipper Virat Kohli and weightlifter Saikom Mirabai Chanu have been recommended for the prestigious Khel Ratan Awards. If Kohli backs the honour, he'll become third cricketer to do so after Sachin Tendulkar, who won the award in 1997, and former Indian skipper Mahendra Singh Dhoni, who had won the award in 2007. Chanu, on the other hand, would like to join off Karna Mahil Maleshwari and Namiram Pakkan Kunjarani, who had received the award in 1995 and 1996, respectively. The weightlifter had clinched a gold medal in 48kg category at the 21st Commonwealth Games 2018 in Australia. And, and, and 20 other names have been recommended for the Arjuna Awards. These include javelin thrower Neera Chopra, junior world champion sprinter Hima Das, world, women cricketer Smithy Manthana and tennis star Rohan Bopanna. The names of eight coaches have also been recommended for Dronacharya Award. These include India's Golden Girl, former athlete P.T. Usha, National Archery Compound Coach, Jeevan Jot Singh Teja, and Asian Games Gold Medalist Arpinder Singh Coach S.S. Pannu. The China Open Badminton Tournament kicked started today with top Indian shuttlers competing for the coveted title. In the women's single ace, Indian shuttler P.V. Sindhu defeated Japan's Saina Kawakami in the first round. Sindhu beat Kawakami 21-15, 21-13 to make it to next round. Saina Nehwal, who had won China Open 2014, will open her campaign against Korea's Sung Ji Hyun. She has an 8-2 head-to-head against the Korean. In men's singles, seven-seeded Kidambi Shrikant will open his campaign against Denmark's Rasmus Gemke. While another Indian the Free, H.S. Pranoy, will start his campaign against 8th seeded Anka, Long Angus of Hong Kong. 
Off to cricket news now. Afghanistan have knocked out five-time champions Sri Lanka out of the Asia Cup. The Afghan side beat Lankans by 91 runs at Sheikh Zayed Stadium in Abu Dhabi. She's in target of 250 runs. The Lankans were bundled out for just 158 runs in 41.2 overs. Upal Tharanga was the highest scorer for the Lankans with his knock of 36 runs, but there were very less contribution from the rest of the team. For Afghanistan, Mujibur Rahman, Golbadan Naib and Rashid Khan and Mohammad Nabi picked up two wickets each. Batting first, Afghanistan were all out for 249 in 50 overs. Rehmat Shah was the highest scorer with his knock of 72 runs. For Sri Lanka, Tisara Parera was a pick of the bowlers who took five-wicket haul. In today's match, India will take on Hong Kong in their Asian Cup opener, while the men in blue will face arch-rivals Pakistan on the 19th September. And all the six crew members of Iron SV Tarini, which went for a round of globe sale, have won Tenzing Norgay National Adventure Award. The award is highest national recognition for outstanding achievement in the field of adventure on land, sea and air. The crew led by Lieutenant Commander Vartika Joshi returned to Goa on 21st May after successfully circumnavigating the world in more than eight months. It was flagged off from INS Mandavi boat pool last year on 10th September. That's it for now. Keep watching Rajasabha TV for more national and international news. Thank you.